My name is Rick Fassett and this is part two in the video series on how to understand and debug test coverage issues in the Tessent AWG tools. In this second example, we have a little bit more information going on, including a second column of information. We're going to hold off on explaining that for a few minutes and just take a look now at what the greatest AU category is. So again, the test coverage loss, first of all, this is transition faults. So it's the transition delay fault model. And we have a little over 3% of ATBG untestables. And if we look at our breakdown of AUs, the most significant category here is the pin constraint category. All right, which results in a little over 1% of test coverage loss. And you'll notice that there's an asterisk next to the PC. And that asterisk indicates that if we were to use the report statistics dash detailed analysis command, we'll get a little bit more information, a little more detailed information. So let's go ahead and uh, let's issue that command. I'm using some shorthand notation to report stat dash detail. And what we've done here is we've taken the pin constraint category, which accounts for a little over 1%, and we've broken it down by pin constraint as to what are the significant contributors, contributors to that test coverage loss. So what this shows here, this is the actual pin name or input pin names that a uh, pin constraint or input constraint was applied to. In this case, a constant one was applied to this pin, and it resulted in 0.68% coverage loss. Same thing here, uh, constraint added on this pin uh, is last 0.15. And then we have a couple more categories. So there are some additional pin constraints that on their own, they don't individually uh, contribute to uh, a significant coverage loss, but the the aggregate effect of all those individual constraints results in 0.23. It's just too many and too small a number to list out the details. And then in some cases, and right now one fault is due to the common combined effect of multiple pin constraints. Okay, so what this tells you, what can you do for debugging this type of a problem is, first of all, the assumption is that these pin, pin constraints are necessary in order to run the scan test. You could always go back and look at that assumption. Is it safe to assume that you do need these pin constraints in order to implement the test um, and try using... Uh, you know, rerunning ATPG without the pin constraint, uh, see if you can get through DRCs, and then see if there's any difference in the test coverage. But mostly, this is telling you that here are some faults that you'll never be able to, to detect because they need to be constrained in order to implement the test. So it's good to know what you can't go after, and you can focus on some of the other categories. Now, if you wanted, you could actually take a look at some of the details of these, in this case, 126 faults that are associated with this particular constraint. If you want to actually look at all those faults, you can actually uh, write the faults to a uh, file name. Let's call it AUPC. All right, and we're going to specify dash class AU because that's the fault class. But then we want to actually say it's the PC subcategory. And furthermore, I want this particular pin constraint. So if I write all those faults there, I can actually take a look at the uh, file. And we're actually listing out all of those uh, faults that were associated with this particular pin constraint. Now, in this case, I don't think we need to go into this level of detail, but I want to show you the command that you can use to actually go into that. Okay, so that gives you an idea on the most significant category, uh, which is pin constraint in this case. I do want to take a look at a couple additional categories. For instance, this very next one, false path. So again, we're doing transition delay faults, right? so it's an at-speed pattern. Um, some false paths have been defined, probably by reading in the SDC file. And as a result of having false paths, uh, that don't meet timing. So these are paths that for sure cannot operate at the uh, stated functional frequency or tested frequency. The, these faults are ATBG untestable, okay? And they represent 0.68% of the test coverage loss. Now, for some users, they do not want to be penalized for at-speed coverage loss because of false paths. Because if you look at it, uh, false paths are designed not to operate at that frequency, that's why we tell the tool, don't test that false path, because it won't work. 
Now, traditionally, we've always reported it as ATPG untestable because that's a fair way to represent it. Some users want to know what the number is if we do not include those. Knowing that these are paths that cannot be tested at speed, what if we ignore those for the moment? So what we've done here is we've created this additional col column of information called the relevant coverage. All right. So we're just including the total relevant faults. So we're going to delete the categories of faults that we've determined that would be considered as irrelevant. In this case, false path faults uh, would be one of those categories. So if you want to look at the coverage without including those faults, we'll recalculate the test coverage based on removing those faults from the population. In fact, everything is recalculated based on uh, deleting those faults from the, uh, the coverage calculation. So false paths by default is one of those categories that we'll delete. You could change that default behavior if you want, but otherwise we keep both numbers. You can choose what to use. The other category that we'll also remove from the relevant coverage category are the EDT faults. So the faults in the EDT logic itself. EDT logic is not tested by the scan patterns, so therefore it doesn't get actually detected as part of the scan patterns and reported in the statistics as detected. But they are tested, virtually all tested, in the chain plus IP test, which is run prior to the scan patterns themselves. So because they are tested, just not part of the scan patterns, uh, but as part of the chain plus IP test, uh, we can reasonably delete those from the relevant coverage category. Uh, so the total relevant coverage, having removed those categories, is 97.14%. The user gets to choose which of these numbers he wants to go with.